So it was about 20 years ago that I had one of the greatest experiences of uh, my high school days, and that was going to prom. I didn't care much for dance as much before my senior year. I was too cool for them, things like that. But I had the opportunity to go with this young woman who a few years later would somehow be convinced to spend the rest of her life with me. And so we had a great time that night. Even though by this point we were no longer dating, we had a great time that night at prom. It really was a lot of fun. But the thing was about me going to prom is I don't know how to dance. I didn't have any cool moves. I wasn't smooth on the dance floor or anything like that. So you kind of make it up as you go. I mean, I would do like, like silly things to kind of try and make people laugh around me and things like that. But the only dance move I really know was that one that John Travolta made famous in a movie in the 90s. You know that, you know, that's, that, that's my dance move. That's my repertoire. But you can get by with that because everybody's just having a good time when the, when the beat's pounding and things like that. Everybody's just out there expending energy, moving to the beat, things like that. It, the real challenge was when it was time to slow dance, when the slow romantic song will come on, you know, and, and it shouldn't have been difficult because really the only thing you need to know is the status of your relationship in a slow dance, right? Because if you're dating seriously and the slow song comes on, you know, you're in an embrace and one person rests their heads on the other's shoulders and you kind of sway back and forth. That's really all slow dancing. Maybe you slowly turn in a circle. You know, oh, this is so great, the greatest day of my life, right? But if, if, you're not, if you're not dating per se, this is just like a date between friends, then you don't do the embrace, right? Your hands are on her hips, her hands are on your shoulders, and you make sure you glance around the room periodically so you don't find yourself in this uncomfortable long stare between people who are just friends. Because you don't want to give anyone the idea that you're thinking, oh, we should, take, we should be more serious about this. So, you know, because that'll just ruin everything that night, right? So that's really all you should have to worry about. Except when it came time for me and Katie to dance, we both wanted to lead. <laughs> so I sway one way, she sways the other, and it looks like we're doing the slow motion tango. <laughs> You know, because, you know, and the thing was, we were Southern Baptists at the time. Even to be out dancing was kind of stretching the rules for us, you know. And so for me, it was like, okay, look, we're already dancing. The expectations of my, you know, our religious culture in that time was the man leads, you know. So there we had to struggle and we had to figure out how to navigate that, right? And so we did. I mean, nowadays, I'm all about women's equality. When that notice notification came up on Facebook about Women's Equality Day, I was, I was joyous in that moment remembering the struggles that women in our country and around this world have gone through and continue to fight for equality. But then I was very much locked into, hey, I'm supposed to lead this dance. And we had to figure that out that night so that we'd quit the slow motion tango and move in unison as we make sure we don't look longingly into each other's eyes because we weren't dating anymore. And I knew if anyone was tempted to do so, it would be me, because I still wanted to be dating at the time. I'm just telling you. But, <laughs> but when we read this passage in James, you know, we are commencing this series on the book of James, looking at life as kind of a dance, a dance that we have with God the Creator, a dance that we have to try and make sense of what this life looks like and how it is that we can be the people that God created us to be. But that's a daunting task, right? I mean, as humans, we know uh, as Christians that sin has corrupted our being, that it's alienated us from God, that we've alienated ourselves from God, that we, have, that we struggle with selfishness, we struggle with self-righteousness, we struggle with arrogance, we struggle with territorialism, we struggle with greed. I mean, these are things that are firmly implanted in our hearts because of the corruption of sin. So how do we live the way God wants us to live? How do we even have the strength to do this? And the answer in James is quite simple that, well, yes, it's very important. If we read this passage, we'll find a challenging passage of how important it is. But we'll also find those hints throughout James as well, that the, about the great news about trying to live the way God calls us to. And that's that it's not by our strength that we become Christ-like. It's not by our strength that we take on the mind of Christ. 
It is by the grace of God. Early on in chapter 1, we didn't read this today, but early on in chapter 1, James calls out to the people and says, if any of you seeks wisdom from above, then ask God for it. It's not up to us to come up with great ideas and wise responses to the things of this world and wise responses to the things we've done in our lives, you know, and have that be our wisdom. We don't have that, with, we don't have that ability. But God, however, will give us the wisdom if we ask. Through the Holy Spirit, we can have the wisdom to know who God's calling us to be, how, God, how we're supposed to live, and then reveal that to all the world with our lives. Not to say, ah, look at me, but hey, look at what God is doing. You remember that jerk I used to be? Or you remember that selfish fool I used to be? Or, or you remember that kind of clueless individual I used to be? Or that, you know, you, you remember how filled with despair I used to be? You know, when, when we ask for that wisdom and we seek to follow God and God answers that prayer, it'll reveal God to the world, not, not ourselves. It's all about God's strength. And, and James will go on to tell us every good and perfect gift comes from God so that we can be the first fruits of God's creation. You see, sin can be overcome in our lives, but if we sit around thinking, oh man, it's all about me, I got to do this all myself, we're going to fail miserably. But if we recognize that these good and perfect gifts are offered to us by God, then we'll understand that God can do this work in us. The power of sin can be overcome in our hearts so that we have a holiness of heart, which is the root of all of our action, that then bears itself out in the holiness of life, where God's love pours out from us to others in transformative ways. So we have this within us, but... Remember, we're talking about the dance of life. And we're talking about ourselves individually and ourselves as a church, ourselves as humanity, in this kind of dance of life with God our creator. Except maybe in the present moment, God's wanting to lead the dance, but we're taking the lead ourselves. And we get that slow motion tango of life that just looks chaotic. So it's important in the dance of life that we remember that we need to allow God to lead this dance. You see, because when we lead the dance, James will tell us that that is when we are lured away by our own desire, and that desire gives birth to sin, and that sin leads to death, meaning our alienation from God, our alienation to one another, the selfishness, the arrogance, the territorialism, the violence that divides us from each other and brings great suffering in this world. But when we let God lead and we let God transform us, when we let God make us the first fruits of his creation by the true word of Christ, then our lives will be transformed and our lives both individually and together will be transforming lives, bringing great renewal, bringing new life to this world. So that's our challenge today to let God lead the dance, to understand that, yes, we are called to, to, have, to allow God to overcome the power of sin in our lives and understand that it's by God's strength alone that that's done. It's not about continually flogging ourselves in the back when we mess up, but simply saying, I have failed you, God, because I stepped out and I tried to lead the dance. I invite you again today to lead the dance of our life together. Now, we continue to nurture this dance. We continue to learn the dance steps. You know, we, we have our Bibles that we can study daily, study regularly, and we can pray to God, praying for that wisdom. If you go out here today on the table, you've, many of you have received it by email too, there are daily Bible readings with an explanation of how they're arranged and why they are there the way they are to help us think through what God was doing in the world, what God is doing in the world, what God will be doing in the world because God's love fills this world. You have the opportunity to, to engage in small, in small groups where we'll study the Bible together. We had a fellowship class this meeting. A new class will be starting for adults the Sunday after Labor Day. 
We'll have the opportunity to go out into our community and seek to put the wisdom that God is giving us through our prayers by God's grace and strength into practice because soon we're, we will be signing people up to mentor kids at the Boyd Intermediate School. Kids who are either struggling, maybe they're a little bit behind in reading and math, maybe they're simply kids who they don't have the care at home that, you, that kids need to really grow and develop and to be the best possible individuals that they can be. They simply need a little extra attention. And if you have 30 to 45 minutes a week that you can give to these children, their lives will be greatly touched by it, simply because you seek to step out and join, let God lead the dance of your life if you have time available during the day and sit down with a child once a week. So we have the opportunities available to us. God offers this gift freely, but we must respond. We must say, yes, God, I am praying today for wisdom. We must say, yes, God, I don't have the strength to do this on my own. Give me every good and perfect gift so that my life can be changed and transformed into one of holiness. So let us step forward. Allow God to take the lead of the dance of our lives. Give God the allowances to rearrange our priorities, to break down our prejudices, to fill our hearts with love towards those that we've otherwise despised, to those we've otherwise cast downward glances upon, and allow God's wisdom, God's grace, God's spirit to lead our dance and teach us the dance steps so that we can dance in a way that transforms this world. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen.